Today I'm going to show you my process for creating this animation. This is the second in a series of space animations I've been working on. The first was this wildly more popular animation. And yes, I know everyone likes this first one more because everyone was sure to let me know in the comments on Instagram and Reddit how much more they like this one. But, you know, I like this one more. And it's my page, my rules. So we're going to take a look at the process for this one. Now, I learned a lot from the first Lost in Space animation about how I wanted to rig certain elements, but going into this, I knew I also wanted to try out uh, joysticks and sliders, which is a popular tool from AE Scripts, which is really useful for rigging, and I use it a lot on different elements, rigging the cockpit here, rigging the the limbs, the steering wheel, the, the gear shifter, even some of the UI elements. Um, and it was really cool and really fun to try out. So let's take a look. So the first thing I did was sketch out some of my ideas on paper. Even though I had a really good idea of what this was going to be, a pilot jumping from planet to planet, lost in space, not finding any life, I still wanted to figure out some things on paper. Um, what the inside of the cockpit might look like. You can see I was experimenting with some ideas. Was this some kind of joystick? And through this sketching process, I kind of landed on the idea that it might be kind of weird and, and quirky and so random and funny if it was a steering wheel and gear shifter, some kind of regular car controls. I haven't really ever seen that before in a spacecraft, so that's kind of the idea I went with, and that's something I probably would not have landed on if I hopped straight on the computer. So I think always kind of starting on paper is a really important step of the process. Even though I'm one of the top 10 worst sketchers in North America, it still really helps me figure out things along the process. And then next it's time to start building assets in Illustrator. And as you can see, the way I work, I don't really build the whole scene perfectly as a one-to-one -one representation of how I think it should look. Um, I'm just kind of building the bits and pieces. Um, I like to have more of a dynamic workflow, so you know, I'm just building the parts. <clears throat> you know, so I'm just kind of building a toolkit. And so, you know, I really want to think about things about how they need to be animated. So, for example, if I know that these fingers are going to rotate, I want to build joints with kind of perfect edges. So if this finger is going to rotate like this, you know, I don't want to have hard edges that are going to poke out here, things like that. And, you know, since these are going to remain vector, once I import them into Illustrator, it's okay. If these aren't the final colors, I can easily change things like that. I put these kind of elements, um, distorted them onto their angles, but I have flat copies of them because I know that I'm going to actually put them at certain angles in After Effects, so I want them to remain flat for when I'm importing them. But then from here, I'm going to use Overlord to import uh, assets into After Effects so that they remain vector. So I can grab a bunch of my cockpit elements like this and then easily push them into After Effects. And the nice thing about this is that they remain vector. So all the shapes are here, which allows me to, if I need to, easily kind of grab shapes and do whatever I need to. And this is my preferred way to work instead of having assets that are dependent and linked to external files outside of After Effects. So after I pushed the cockpit, then I just started roughly animating some planets like this. And I have a tutorial for animating planets, link in the description down below. And once I have a few planets animated, I could just drop these comps onto the timeline and just start kind of blocking out beats for my animation. So drop a few planets timed out, and then you just kind of start, you know, having the basis for your space travel. Now let's take a look at creating a joystick. Now the first joystick I made controlled the interior of the cockpit and the stars to give a nice parallax movement to everything. 
and look like we are piloting through space. So how a joystick works is you create the extremes for any direction something can move over five frames and then it sets up a controller so you only have to animate those properties once. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to create five keyframes, one for the origin, one for right, one for left, one for up, and one for down. And these are obviously very extreme, just so you can see the example. And then now I'm going to do the same for the stars, but I'm going to do the stars opposite so it feels like it's parallax. And then for the stars, I want to do the same right, left, up, and down, except they're going to be opposite so it feels like it's parallax. Now if I grab all these properties that I want to be affected by the joystick and create the joystick, name it whatever, now I have this controller and when I move this around you can see everything is controlled by this joystick property. Pretty cool stuff and now I only have to make keyframes on this and it's going to make an animation out of this. So I just have one controller that controls all the properties. Voila. Great stuff. Next I set up sliders for the steering wheel and gear shifter. Now sliders are different than joysticks because they only have uh, two extremes, left and right, instead of the four extremes, which can go everywhere. So this was simple for the gear shifter because it just had to go kind of forwards and backwards. But for the steering wheel, it got a little weird because I was trying to make it go in this circular direction with all the kind of fingers animating. So it didn't really work when I had to squeeze it into two frames. So let me show you how I figured that out. So here I have my hand and my steering wheel. And we only get two keyframes to make a slider here. So if, if I was to make you know the steering wheel rotate however much, you know, let's say to here, and we'll make the hand go from here to here and try to make this path nice. Well, since it's only two frames, we get this really bendy path. So if we make a, a slider here, when we control this, you, know, you get this weird kind of movement where it just slides across. It's not what we want it to be doing. We want it to be following that, that path. So let's undo this and, and see how we can fix this. Well, maybe if I you know stretch this out a lot and try to try to fix this, you know, maybe I could pre-comp this, pre-comp these together and fix it that way. The problem here now is that there's no keyframes for me to grab onto, right? So maybe there's a way if I went into the comp that I could link them to this slider. But now this is just kind of getting really complicated and messy for me. And I wanted to keep these live if I wanted to edit them easier. So I'm gonna undo this again. And here, here's what I figured out I could do. If I grab all of these properties, and when I was working on this, I had a bunch of properties. I had all of the fingers bending and stuff like that. I'm gonna create an Animo controller. This is in motion three, which I also have a video on. You can check out link below. I created an Animo controller like this. Now I'm able to squeeze this down into two frames and create a slider with this. And now this works perfectly. It's like magic. Don't know why this works and nothing else does, but it's great. It's like a hack. And the beautiful part about this is all of these layers are not pre-comped or anything, they're still here with their original length. So I could go in and, you know, edit the edit this path if I wanted to. Maybe I want this to actually go like this. Well now on my slider, if I make a change, now the hand's going off. Boom. So I think that Animo and joysticks and sliders together is like a crazy combination and I'm really gonna try to see how far I can push this on a future project. And I just wanna add on that this 
if I didn't make it clear already, this was my very first time using joysticks and sliders. So I might be doing this very wrong. So if anyone's like a total pro and is cringing at me not knowing how to use this and there is a simpler way to do this, uh, you can go ahead and flame me or whatever, but I'm not trying to spout out bad knowledge here, okay? This is not a tutorial, all right? This is just kind of a process video of what I learned. As for the UI, there's a lot of pretty basic stuff going on here that altogether might just make it look more complicated. There's some color expressions that I stole from the internet that have a lot of these shapes that just cycle between colors randomly. There's a lot of flat comps like this that I've used corner pin to morph to the shapes. I've animated compositions like this in three-dimensional space and then placed them in the interior to give some more dimensionality. This one is literally just the planets animations that are tiled to look like they're on a screen. We have this text animation like this that basically just uses a lot of wiggle properties to cycle between letters randomly until it sets onto its actual characters. These are just kind of hand animated random elements that loop for a long time. So there's not too much interesting stuff going on in the UI. I like to just have fun with this stuff, you know, it doesn't, the, the less real you make it, I think the better. Just use your imagination with UI. And then I even use the joysticks and sliders control as UI, which I think is a nice touch because it's basically free animation and it moves with your animation automatically so it looks like it's supposed to be there. So I thought that that was pretty clever, I'm not gonna lie. Once I have a pretty good overall timing of the animation and things are coming along pretty well, I start adding texture and final touches in a master comp where I just drop the animation and add all the final touches. So here I created a null object and added two sliders to create a shake controller. I have a frequency and amplitude slider and here I can attach a, a bunch of properties. So I have a, a new adjustment layer with a transform control and I added a wiggle expression on it and I attached the wiggle expression to my frequency and amplitude sliders. So whenever the spaceship starts to kind of warp jump, go through space, I can crank those wiggle sliders up and the spaceship is gonna start to feel like it's hitting turbulence because the scale is gonna start shaking a lot. And when it's coming out of the warp jump, they start to drop back down. And I can do this strategically throughout the animation. Now, with this slider, I can link a bunch of properties to it. So I have this happening with the shake, which is the scale shaking up and down. I'm also doing it with, as you can see, some chromatic aberration happening here by duplicating the layer three times for red, green, and blue and splitting the channels and slightly um, moving their position according to these controllers. And I'm also even doing it in some places like inside of the UI. Like I, I attached this UI element here to get noisier and less noisy according to that wiggle controller. So when it starts to go into the warp jump, this line gets more erratic and when it comes out, it gets uh, more straight. There's even an expression on the opacity of all these interior panel lights linked to that controller so that they all start blinking randomly at the same time according to when that wiggle is happening so that they can all start blinking at the same time near the black hole and that's just according to that slider. And then there's also this controller for the shadows and color highlights that are happening here and I have a video that goes pretty in depth on color controllers so I'm just gonna breeze by it. and how I kind of planned this out was all these shapes are linked to this controller and I tried to match it with what's happening on screen. So if the planet is coming by and it's an orange planet, then the highlights are going to be orange. If we're jumping through space and it's like a, you know, the screen is filled up with white, then maybe the shadows extend out 
big and the highlights turn white. And then finally, when we get sucked up into the black hole, I threw on an adjustment layer over top everything and put on a Kaleida effect to give it this crazy kaleidoscope, which then allowed me to easily jump back to the beginning of the loop and cover that seamlessly. And that about wraps it up. So there was a lot to cover in this video. I had to cut a few things. So let me know if you had any questions about this. If there's anything I was missing that you really want to know the secrets about, let me know. You can get, grab the project files for this and my other stuff. Links down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.